The Texas Parks and Wildlife Television Series is funded in part by a grant from the Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration Program. Through your purchases of hunting and fishing equipment and motorboat fuels, over $40 million in conservation efforts are funded in Texas each year. And by Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation, helping to keep Texas wild with the support of proud members across the state. Find out more at tpwm.org. Additional funding provided by Ram Trucks. Guts. Glory. Ram. Coming up on Texas Parks and Wildlife. Oh, I can see the yellow crown. What's more fun than getting outside, being with a bunch of friends, and doing something that brings everyone together? You know, I think that's our kind of our purpose on Earth, is to, you know, not just take, but give something back. The people that I met and talked to there were able to share that with me, and then just being out there and seeing that land and feeling that peace was just a wonderful experience. Texas Parks and Wildlife, taking Texans outside for 30 years. It's just before sunrise at Benson Rio Grande Valley State Park, and some creatures are stirring. Everybody ready? A group has gathered for one purpose. Oh, I have the checklist. To see and hear as many kinds of birds as they can in a day. I think the goal for today is 100. They are competing in the Great Wasn't Texas it? Birding Classic. Team name? The Queen Fishers. These are the Queen Fishers. I'm the king of the Queen Fishers. <laughs> Before they enter the park, you hear it? they have already made some progress. Got it. Let's reach out. Woo. <gasps> We're not going to move from the parking lot. We're going to stay here. We're going to stay here the whole day. <laughs> You have lunch, binoculars, field guide. We need to use the restroom before we go. A few hours to the north, another team gathers. Team Osprey, let's go, Team Osprey. It's the awesome Ospreys with two birding mentors and their science teacher. Ready? Let's go. <laughs> this team of fifth graders is also embarking on the birding classic. Okay, there was a bird we saw a lot on Saturday. Do you remember what bird that is? It's something you are correct, it is a phalarope. Good job, Brian. Martha so McCloud uses the competition the to teach students about biology shoveler. and shoveler also duck. teamwork. Did you see it? Uh-uh. All right, whole team's got to see it. That's a big skill we work on with these kids. We teach them to collaborate together, valuing each other's opinions, listening to what someone else has to say. You guys keep your eyes to the sky. This is the culmination of a year's worth of study with these kids. Call it out loud when you see a bird. Like the queen fishers, There's a great blue the awesome right ospreys hope to see a hundred bird species by noon. Yay, great blues on the list. And they too are off to a good start. 88 more to go. <laughs> Kids need a tangible target to shoot for, and so setting 100, that's a good number for them to try and work for for a species count. Back in the Rio Grande Valley, the counting continues. There's the woodpecker again. <laughs> that's a uh, black crested titmouse. Yeah. And that's a cardinal. It's getting good. <laughs> right back in this tree. Green jay. Nice. I got the green jay, I got the titmouse. Morning jay. Oh, that's another bird. That's a lot of Oh, there he is. There he is. Yeah, that's a beautiful bird. It's a green heron. It's pretty incredible birding down here, which is why this competition is so much fun. More than half of all the birds that have been seen in the U.S. have been seen in our four county area. Oh, what's that? One of the Great Texas Birding Classic teams had almost 200 in one day. Great Texas Mosquito Classic. Oh, I got a little mosquito. What's more fun than getting outside? being with a bunch of friends and, and doing something that really just brings everyone together.
While the Great Texas Birding Classic was once held only along the coast, it is now statewide. Good, good. Teams choose when to compete from mid-April to mid-May and how. Serious birders may opt for a 24-hour big day in their region or even a full week statewide, visiting as many sites as possible. The Sunrise to Noon tournament may be more ideal for youth teams or those more focused on just having fun. But perhaps the most relaxing way to participate in the birding classic is known as the Big Sit. We have some shorebirds right over there. Like, see where that blind is? Yeah. The Big Sit is a really great event in the birding classic. It is literally birding from a 17-foot diameter circle for a full 24-hour day or as much of a day as your team wants to do. The Big Sit is just something that literally anyone can do. We call it the tailgate party for birders. I'm an amateur birder. A lot of these people are newbies, and then we have one or two really good birders on the team that are helping explain what everything is. Most of them are cliff swallows. So it's this wonderful learning experience. Simi Paul made it to Ann Piper. I got to see that one. We are the tweeting chats. The chatting tweets. Tweeting chats. <laughs> they are communications folks, and they tweet, they use social media. A chat is a type of bird. A, a yellow-breasted yellow chat. I'm sure it tweets. <laughs> it's just a very fitting name for this team. This group is great, and they're having a good time. We're an embarrassment to birders everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Back on the coast, the awesome ospreys hit the birding hotspots of Port Aransas. We are at the Leona Turnbull Birding Center. No, oh, here, fix your jacket. There you go. Okay, I'm hoping these kids can get to 100. They're the last team to compete. Where'd it go? Being at the tail end of migration, it's gonna be tough. It just flew over there. Right now, they're neck and neck with my fourth grade team. Yeah, the Eastern Kingbird up there. There's an Oriole. Oh, we've got a spoonbill going. Whoa, what is that? White Ibis. The red and black bird. We're gonna go to several places today, so we've got a lot of time ahead of us. Oh, there it is. By mid-morning, the queenfishers and their king are looking for kingfishers. As we were eating our breakfast, a green kingfisher perched about 20 feet away from us and then uh, dashed across the water to the other side of the pond. They're on the t-shirt. We're in the area to get them, so hopefully we'll get all three today. The team has migrated to the Edinburgh Scenic Wetlands, another world birding center site. We've seen a lot. Hopefully we'll see more. In our region here in South Texas, the last 10 years, there's been so much development of these nature centers for the world birding centers. So it's getting easier and easier just to find a place in your backyard neighborhood to go out and bird and see what's out there. And some true neighborhood birding is also on the agenda. One of the things that I like is our trees are kind of short. <laughs> so you can drive through and look through the neighborhoods and there's some great neighborhoods with old growth trees. Oh, it's right there. And you can see some really great birds in there. Oh, I can see the yellow crown. So you can do dry birding as we were doing today and walking around. Very easy to do. Okay, let's go. Bird on. We are not to 100 yet. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're in the 70s right now. Okay, if not a blue jay, something else we haven't gotten. I hope we don't see it like at 12.01. No! Does everybody see a sandwich turn? No. Yes. Right there. From their mobile bird blind, the awesome ospreys continue their count, taking in habitat from beach to bay and woodland to wetland. Oh, that's the red start. That's the red start. It's got like the yellow on it. As noon and the end of their competition approaches, the heat and early start begin to take their toll. After a while, they kind of start getting tired. Eventually, even the birds need some rest. It's their noon freak out. It's 12, guys. That's it. Woo! Bird like crazy all morning, and then go eat lunch. It's nice. <laughs> Great blue heron. Yes. Great egret. Yes. yes. In the final tally, the queenfishers did not reach a hundred species, but they did finish second in the all ages sunrise to noon competition. Eighty-six species. We didn't get to a hundred, but eighty-six is still pretty good for half a day. See anything cool, Brian? The awesome ospreys placed third in their region and age group. 
seeing 105 species of birds. And the tweeting chats saw 54. So it's coming in here, Ranking guys. them first among their region's big sits. But the numbers may really be for the birds. In its first year as a statewide contest, the great Texas birding classic raised $17,000 for habitat conservation and nature tourism projects. It's for a good cause and we had fun. I really enjoy it. I enjoy bird watching. I enjoy keeping track of the birds that we see. And it's definitely more fun for us when we do it together. What was that? <laughs> so it's a um, tanager. Yes, it is. Truly amazing in a year's time how much they've learned. Yes. Not just going out and look at birds, oh, they're cute, they're pretty, let's count them. Yeah. They learn that they've got a responsibility as stewards of the environment. Oh, yeah. They inspire me daily. Yeah, cool. yeah look. They're interested, they're curious. They just need that adult to take them out in the outdoors. You guys ready? Those are good birds. Keep looking. <laughs>Wish you could spend more time with nature? Well, every month you can have the great outdoors delivered to you. Since 1942, Texas Parks and Wildlife Magazine has been the outdoor magazine of Texas. Every issue is packed with outstanding photography and writing about the wild things and wild places of this great state. And now Texas's best outdoor magazine is available as an app. It's just that easy. Texas Parks and Wildlife Magazine, your connection to the great outdoors. We're at the Mill Iron Ranch in Collingsworth County, Southeast Texas Panhandle, near Wellington, Texas. Meet Don Allred. Get an account on the cattle, see if they're all in. Looks like we're about 20 short, but there's still cattle are still coming in, so they're probably all gonna be here. Don and his brother Al bought the Mill Iron Ranch about 12 years ago. We have a very diverse ranch. We've got the Salt Fork of the Red River. We've got O.M. Creek. Up north, we've got some rocky, hilly country. This is an old cave that's on the ranch. It's got some names and dates back to the late 1800s on it. Old cattle brands and T.A. Willard, 1898. Can you imagine what kind of great shelter this was back in the 1800s? Pretty neat, isn't it? I don't really know what the correct terminology for a bunch of bats is, do you? <laughs> Hey Byron Bell is the ranch manager. This is where we run our, our yearling replacement heifers. This is some of them over here. We run 500 head of mama cows out here, but and we could run a lot more. Well, you're not putting as much pressure on it. You're saving a lot of grass for, for other things like quail and turkey. <laughs> If you're running a lot of cattle in a pasture, then the chances are of you destroying their habitat is greater. We're also participating in the Grassland Reserve Program. We've agreed not to break out any ground, not to put any farmland in, not to develop this land, because we want this ranch to be better than when we got it and, you know, and improve. I mean, you know, I think that's our kind of our purpose on earth is to, you know, not just take, but give something back. Mill Iron Ranch always gives back to the kids. We're gonna have four groups, so one minute per plant. Okay, looks like everybody's ready. Today, the Mill Iron Ranch hosted a uh, wildlife and range contest. Hey. The Mill Iron Ranch is very open to having groups come out in hopes that people will appreciate these wild spaces and hope they learn something about it. Well, they're kind of our future. And the better that these kids understand it, especially at an early age, it may affect the direction they take, you know, for the rest of their lives. 
maybe this will make an impression on them on what this country is and what it should be. The burned area looks really good, so it looks like you had a good fire, and uh, we have little blue stem coming back. We kept a lot of this stuff in check, let the grass take a hold and kind of get ahead. Landowners like Don and his brother, they uh, realize the importance of protecting these areas for future generations. We're not making any more land, and um, it's important to protect these spaces and uh, maybe inspire others to do some great things on their property. There aren't many ranches left like this. There's no power lines, there's no pump jacks. It's just kind of a throwback to real old times. And, and I love it that way. I couldn't see myself living anywhere else. Diamond, go for a hole. This is Tater. Nowhere else I'd rather be than, than right here, right now. It was 30 years ago that the Texas Parks and Wildlife television series, originally known as Made in Texas, got its start. Gwen Zucker is one of more than 30 producers, photographers, writers, and editors who have contributed to the show since its first broadcast in 1985. Hello, I'm Gwen Zucker, and I've worked with the television program for about 12 years, and my favorite story is Cattle Lake. And the reason it's my favorite story is because it's such an incredibly beautiful place. The people that I met and talked to there were able to share that with me and then just being out there and seeing that land and feeling that peace was just a wonderful experience. So I hope those that are watching can feel some of that peace that's right here in Texas's backyard. Caddo Lake, on the edge of Northeast Texas and Louisiana, the borders between man and nature perish. We produce a tree in Caddo Lake, in Buffalo. Impossible. The trees in Caddo Lake were here at the fall of the land and to make this a lake. And every time a tree get destroyed, I think, in Caddo Lake, it's just like a man. Never nothing to take his place. Lake is not a typical lake in the sense that you can come to its shore and admire a great and serene mass of water, but rather it is a submerged forest, a maze of channels, lakes, bayous, and oxbows formed by islands and breaks of cypress trees. Within each park, there is a unique world. There is a great diversity of life in Caddo Lake. From the depth of the waters to the top of the trees, a tremendous number of creatures go about their daily lives. And each of them plays a specific role in keeping the balance of nature. And in this wet forest, among these common species, many rare ones exist. In 1993, Caddo Lake was recognized as a wetland of international importance, one of only 13 such sites in the United States. Caddo Lake did not always exist here. Centuries ago, this was a land of creeks and swamps inhabited by Caddo Indians. These people from a centuries-old culture hunted the woods, grew corn in the fertile soils. 
but their world was to change. For decades, if not centuries, nature was working nearby, toppling trees into the waters of the Red River, forming a great wooden raft nearly 80 miles long. Some archaeologists believe this massive debris pushed the waters of the river back upstream, forcing it to break its banks and flood the Caddo landscape. When the water receded, where once small streams meandered, lakes filled the landscape. The Caddo Indians called them soda. One of these was the lake we now call Caddo. For several more decades, the Great Raft remained a barrier to outsiders, cutting off the lakes from settlement and limiting navigation on the Red River. Captain Henry Miller Shreve of the Army Corps of Engineers, after whom Shreveport was later named, began removing the log jam in 1833. In two years, the lake was open to navigation, exposing the cattle landscape to settlement. As quickly as the boom had come, it was gone. In 1873, to ease navigation on the Red River itself, the Corps of Engineers dynamited the last of the log jam containing the waters of the lake. The water level began to drop. Soon, navigation of large steamboats was impossible. Although commerce seemed to fall with the water, it did not end. All the while, beneath her placid waters lay another boon for the region. The first overwater drilling uh, that ever, ever occurred in this universe, this world of ours, occurred right here on Caddo Lake. Gulf Oil had a camp on the banks of the lake for decades until it was no longer profitable to pump. And another boom passed. Now Caddo is contained by a weir rather than a log jam. Although the steamboats have disappeared and many of the rigs have stopped pumping, the lake remains. And the waters continue to mold the lives of those who grow up on her banks. My dad would go out and catch the big fish, and we raised chickens. We had a big garden, and we even raised potatoes that we served as french fries in the restaurant. I remember some of the fish stories that um, people would tell when they would come in off the lake. I would be helping my mom prepare food to serve in the diner, and I would listen to the stories, but and nobody ever caught a fish like my daddy. Once you've grown up on Caddo Lake, there are some things you never forget. Every time there was a big gathering between Jesus Christ and his people, you will always find it was somewhere about the water. Was enough you get bored, lonely, sad. Come down and take a look at the water. Where you can make your best communication with Jesus Christ. Let Passport to Texas be your guide. Listen to the weekday radio series and encounter fascinating wildlife. Explore the diversity of our parks and historic sites. Enjoy the country's best hunting and fishing. Visit PassportToTexas.org to find a station near you. And remember, life's better outside.
a good boat. This series is funded in part by a grant from the Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration Program. Through your purchases of hunting and fishing equipment and motorboat fuels, over $40 million in conservation efforts are funded in Texas each year. And by Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation, helping to keep Texas wild with the support of proud members across the state. Find out more at tpwf.org. Additional funding provided by Ram Trucks. Guts. Glory. Ram.